The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. strings it is wednesday september 4th i think fifth yes fifth fifth, fifth. sorry it's definitely the fourth. Fifth. no it is the fifth yes i oh, knew geez. i'd get it right. i'm confusing everybody but i do know it is 6 p.m pacific daylight time and of course since we're here it is a time for another installment of southern nevada sports news coming to you from WWDBTV.com. My name is Bill Miller, co-host along with Jeff Belknap. And, uh, you know, we throw that WWDBTV.com out there, but folks, if you're not familiar with it, by all means, go on to the website because there is a real plethora of shows, different topics yep. on our website. And, uh, of course, uh, the man himself, the head honcho, John Stiles, uh, studio owner and head engineer on the board. And, of course, with us, we've, as we alluded to last week, this is our NFL kickoff show. That means it's time for the prognosticator himself from Cleveland, Ohio, George Jorge Mish. George, how you doing, buddy? I think you said me. I uh, can't hardly hear you. But, yes, it's, uh, it's, I'm back, and uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be on the uh, air with you guys for another season. Okay. Appreciate that. Well, I, I'm, can you hear us now? Uh, yes, I can hear you very well. Okay, great. I just want to make sure. Uh, excuse me. All right. We heard you cough. Well, that's important. <laughs> All right. That's what we got. So, folks, as, uh, as we allude to, this is our NFL kickoff show since tomorrow night is the kickoff for the NFL season, Thursday Night Football. Yep. And uh, we are going to touch bases uh, with uh, our picks uh, for the uh, various uh, divisions within the NFC and AFC Conference. And so, uh, without further ado, we are going to jump right in. We're going to start with the NFC Conference. And uh, my esteemed colleagues here, the guys who really put the work into this, who would like to go first? And which division would you would like to start with? I have it right in front of me, and it's the uh, East with the Redskins starting off. NFC East. Okay, George. Is take it okay? away, buddy. All right. Uh, uh, this division has a couple halves and a couple of big one half and a couple have nots and one in the middle. I think Washington with Smith at quarterback will be the uh, tailor in the division. I had them 21st last year at the end of the year. I think they've dropped to 24th. Uh, I believe if I read correctly today that Adrian Peterson is going to be their running back now to start the season. Uh, so I think Washington's going to be in a cellar, not against him, but he's a little bit old of tooth. And I don't think they did much in the off season to uh, uh, change. Although I do think Alex Smith is just as good as Cousins. I think uh, Cousins was so overpaid, it's ridiculous. He just got in a nice whirlwind and ran with it. Third place, very, very uh, 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 improved team, the New York Giants, with Barkley and a, uh, and a Manning a quarterback, uh, healthy Manning, hopefully. Um, They'll be better. They, their biggest thing in the last five, ten years has been their offensive line, picking Soda and uh, and uh, Hernandez up from. I guess he's from Las Vegas. Is this what I heard? Yes. From UTEP. Is that the gentleman? That's true. Chaparral High School. And uh, I just think they have a uh, a much uh, much more solid team. In second place, uh, Dallas. Same team. They really don't have anything. They lost Witten and Bryant, but they basically have everything. One of the small injuries is this, not injury, a health problem with Travis Frederick, their center, who's out with some syndrome that they have no clue when he's coming back, and that may hurt them down the road, although they picked up Ellinger as a center. And the obvious pick is Philadelphia. By the way, I have Dallas 13th, Giants 22nd. Philly, I had them only five. Uh, I just hope they're just status quo. They haven't, uh, they really haven't done anything. But with that Super Bowl hangover, you never know. And when is Wentz coming back? Because I have already picked the Atlanta Falcons to drop the uh, Eagles uh, tomorrow night. I 
believe it is, or whenever it is. But uh, Atlanta, to, or I mean Philadelphia, to go number one in that conference or in that division. Take it away, Jeffrey. Well, I mean, I, I I can't argue with the winner. I mean, I think that Philly's the best team in the uh, division. I will say that Dallas is going to have a little bit harder time, I believe. Um, that, that's, Dak Prescott hasn't really proven anything to me. So he's going to have to, I guess, is the best way to put it. Defensively, average, I think, a, a defensive team. Um, wide receivers, you know, they, they're bringing a couple young guys in. So I'm really waiting for to see somebody kind of stand out for Dallas. Mm-hmm. But I think they might compete for the bottom of that division. Um, I do see a, a much improved uh, Giants team. Um, yesterday in my in my uh, fantasy, I actually picked Eli Manning to kind of snap back. The offensive line that he had last year made it very difficult to to be able to uh, even do anything. And that and the fact that he had some injury didn't really do that well. So <clears throat> I'm going to take Philly to win the division and the other three teams to kind of win all be between like six and eight games. Um I kind of went through the records uh, this week, and I was kind of looking at the different teams, and they they they're a little favorable towards the East because of the divisions that they're playing, the the other divisions that they're playing. So I'm gonna take uh, Philly to win uh, probably ten games, and that or ten ten to eleven games, and then all the other teams fall in the six to eight category. So okay, can you uh, give me a second, third, and fourth? <clears throat> no. <laughs> I think they're – honestly, I think all of those teams are going to be the same. I don't think that um, – I like Alex Smith as a quarterback. I don't know what he's going to look like, you know, taken out of the model that he was in. The the division that uh, – well, I, I saw a per, uh, projection that said he was going to throw for 4,000 yards, which I don't think is going to be true at Washington. So I think that they have a lot – okay, so let me do this. I'll do it for you. Okay, so we'll go Philly, <laughs> Dallas – <laughs> the Giants in Washington. That's how I'm going to lay it out. Okay. But but honestly, I I really think that the Giants could easily be in second place in that division at the okay. end of the year. All right. The only reason I like Dallas in second is I last year obviously they didn't have Elliott for part of the year and and I think uh, Prescott Elliott is the real deal and Prescott will that'll help him out uh, uh, for the whole season if I, he's if, if there's no injuries obviously. I do think that having Elliott is going to be a huge factor in oh, that game. Oh, well, without a doubt, having him if he's healthy for 16 games. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, honestly, I had the uh, the exact same thing. Um, you know, Washington kind of bringing up the rear, but really kind of a uh, – it's, it's always been known as a cannibalistic division. Yeah. Uh, and I had uh, Washington, New York, Dallas, and then, of course, Philadelphia winning it all. I think Dallas um, – I. Again with Ezekiel Elliott there, I think it's uh, they got a good chance of uh, maybe sneaking in actually taking that division, but it'll be close. All righty, Mr. Prognosticator in Cleveland, which uh, division would you like to take we next? We go with the uh, what is that? The Central with the Vikings and the boys. The Norris, yep. The Norris. And despite Jeffrey's pick of Detroit being number one, I got the Detroit Lions <laughs> in the cellar, but not because they're not. The, this is a very very. A very, very good division. I have everybody in the top 16, as a matter of fact, but somebody's got to go last. Yep. Detroit picked up their rush. They didn't get Derek Geist like I asked them to and see how that turned out, which was a blessing for them. But they have improved with Blount and, and Johnson, uh, so I think they're better, but I just don't think they uh, can, can uh, do it with the uh, rest of the division. Uh, you'll be surprised at this, maybe. But I'm taking uh, in third place the Green Bay Packers. Ooh. The healthy Rodgers will make them uh, uh, much improved from last year. But uh, I think the other two teams have uh, uh, have more right to be there. The second team is the Bears. Mac. This was even before Mac was uh, was acquired. I just think their receivers uh, have gotten better. Their D is I think as solid as it's ever been, and their uh, Trubisky has, from Menor, Ohio, by the way, is uh, the key. If he can uh, improve just a bit, he doesn't. Have, he has to manage games. He doesn't have to win them. But Mac can't hurt a defense. Is going to be totally solid. And uh, then I'll have the Minnesota Vikings as number one. Uh, their offensive line is a little bit uh, iffy. Uh, some injuries up there and everything, but. Uh, uh, I guess Cousins is the hero, so I'm going to stick him up there. Their defense can't hurt you, so when you have that type of defense, you uh, 
you just roll with it. So I got Minnesota, Chicago, Green Bay, and Detroit in the Central. All righty. I this is one of the I believe one of the hardest conferences to to really lay out because you have a Chicago team that obviously is going to be much improved within um, literally the last six days. <laughs> yeah, well, I, don't, I I think that that's one part of it. I mean, yeah. the, I, I think their running game is going to get better. They're defensively, they're better. They have the wide receivers. It's all going to come down to their quarterback play. Right. I, I believe to, to to really see how they they uh, finish a season or whatnot. Um, I do fit, see them finishing in a eight and eight somewhere um, record. I don't think, and and honestly, like I don't want to overvalue. Detroit, but they're one of the very few teams that didn't play their starters much at all during the preseason. Along with Oakland, I don't think Oakland played their starters at all, and the Rams definitely didn't really play definitely. All their starters. Yeah. So it's it's hard to say when you when you don't see like what the first team is going to do after four games being played. So I'm not sure like how to figure the Lions. You know, I I don't think Abdullah is a is the guy, and I know that. Um, other play, other teams have I kind of reached out to the Lions mm-hmm. for them, and I would actually kind of would be happy if he left. Um, Johnson coming in as a rookie running back, I have no idea what this guy's going to do. He's a good uh, running back at Auburn. I don't know what he's going to do in the NFL. So to me, that's like one of the big mysteries. Right. Like with the Lions, and normally, like I look at a team and and think, wow, that's good. I mean, think about the the year that they went sixteen and zero. They were four and zero in the preseason. You know, so, I mean, that tells you right there, you have no idea, you know, what, what you're looking at. So, um, I do I do think Chicago and Detroit bring up the bottom of that division. Um, I have Green Bay in second and then Minnesota in first. Although, you know, they're an injury away. You know, I, I watch the way that some of these quarterbacks have been dealt around the NFL. And even, you know, Bridgewater went from there and, and now he's at the Jets and then to the Saints. I mean, you, you see a guy like that kind of get moved around and you're talking about a guy that was a you know a high draft pick you know coming out of louisville and you know and the starter with, with with a lot of promise until he got hurt literally driving that uh, minnesota team into the playoffs yeah gets hurt and now they're they're dealing around like he was actually nothing yeah which is kind of hard to watch but um so that's that's my uh my my lay down Do you, you got all that or not i think so okay, okay. yeah all right yeah <laughs> i'm uh i'm going with uh the uh and again, it's uh, it was really tough, uh, as you know, both of you guys alluded to. But I have um, Chicago actually uh, kind of bringing up the rear. But again, they'll I think they're going to be a much improved team. Uh, then I have uh, Detroit um, in third, and then uh, I actually have Minnesota uh, in second, and Green Bay actually winning the division. Um, I, I think that the the, the Minnesota hangover is. Uh, is going to be in full effect because you're going to have just every week, every game, especially those divisional games, are just going to be so tough this year. That's right. You're not going to have any gimmies yeah. uh, where you could kind of look at Green Bay and then kind of look at Chicago and say, okay, we can kind of do that. Not this year. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Right. And the other thing about um, Green Bay is they don't really have like a standout offensive player. You know, they got a bunch of guys that are good, and I guess it's going to be up to Aaron Rodgers to actually push them out but yeah. you know when you when you see Aaron Rodgers come out with comments like these guys are soft these guys are this they're that that kind of you know that can go one of two ways some people sometimes those players will go backwards and other ones will push to excel yeah. so we'll see what happens with yeah that. I think that when you've got a guy who is a sure bet first round ballot pl- uh, player for Canton yeah saying these things as opposed to somebody who just has an ego uh, the size of the you know the Lambeau field Baker Mayfield <laughs> it's different and I think that he is going to push these guys. Yeah. And uh, with uh, the, there's just no pressure in Green Bay. It really isn't. Yeah. You know, you don't have that specter of these executives. It's completely owned by, you know, the community of Green Bay. That's right. You know, and that's why they have been as solid and consistent as they have been. Okay, George, what's your next division, sir? My division is your Tampa Buccaneer division. Uh, the the South. South. Uh, Tampa is going to take about one second to do, and I'm, I'm, it has nothing to do with their players. They're, 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 on paper, they look very good, but I'll just name their first six games uh, uh, without well, Winston without in the first three. New Orleans, Philly, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Atlanta. There's that five games. And then they come in Cleveland, so that's six games that they're going to be killed. Uh, 
I, you can't. I understand there may be an upset in there, but start zero and five very, very uh, uh, possibly just ruins the season. And uh, and that uh, the, what's his name? Kohler is that his name or Coder? I think he'll be even worse than you, and uh, he'll get the Cooter. <laughs> He'll get the boot first. That's the hot seat, as Bill calls it. The, oh, yeah. The hot seat. The and hot he's, seat. He's, other than Marvin Lewis, he's on a hot seat. So I'm going to give that a uh, fourth-place finish for uh, your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You still with him, Billy? Uh, no. E- yes and no. I- I'll always have a soft spot in my right heart for right Tampa there. Bay, but I'd like to concentrate on, as George would say, five other teams he seems to that's accuse good. me of following. <laughs> But really, it's it's the L.A. Rams and, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs because of family, that sort of thing. Okay, so basically what happened is Tampa got bumped out of that because L.A. came back? Is that yes. What okay. Yeah, yeah. I adopted Tampa because at the time they were the worst team. That's the only reason. Uh, number three in the division, and it's, it's, uh, it's, these are nice top three, but I'll take Carolina third. Uh, they're going to have uh, as many as seven players who started 10-plus games to part of this offseason, but I think Newton is going to have one of his best years with McCaffrey, but only good enough for third, uh, just outside my top ten. A tough one here, tough, 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 but i got to take Atlanta, too. Um, Ooh. What's that? They only need minor tooling uh, to be where they're at. They got a nice team, everything. They really only picked up Busco at guard, I believe, and uh, didn't do much else. And uh, but I know 0-4 in the preseason means nothing, but their offense just has been pathetic. I hope the offensive coordinator can step it up a little bit. And my, uh, I'll give it to you right now, my Super Bowl winner, uh, <coughs> New Orleans, who just strengthened their roster even more. With Bridgewater, they lost Ingram for four games. They have Kamar right behind him to pick it up until he comes back. Solid on uh, both sides of the ball. And, and my Super Bowl winner this year, wow. the New Orleans Saints. You know, George, my uh, my son Jason will uh, just be absolutely tickled pink by your uh, – <laughs> he is a diehard Saints fan. When the right, Rams left L.A., okay. he picked okay. up the Saints. All right. Well, good. Good. Um, I'm not doing that because of that because I didn't know it, but, uh, <laughs> I didn't think so. Okay. okay. Now you pick Atlanta for me, and we'll both be happy. Okay, please. <laughs> so I'm going to take um, Tampa Bay to finish in fourth place, and I do agree with um, with George that they're going to have a tough beginning of the season, but they could start at actually 0 and 6 because I think that Browns will be good enough to beat this team, and that's who they play in Week Six. Woo. Um, third place, I'm actually going to take Atlanta, but even though they have a lot of the same weapons. I think that. You know, you have Julio Jones that's not necessarily happy, I guess is the best way to put it, to still be in Atlanta. Right. And I, I still think that that's going to have a bearing, even though they still have probably arguably one of the best backfields like tandem in the NFL right now. Um, I'm going to take uh, Carolina in second, and I do think Carolina is going to completely fall on the back of Cam Newton. I think that coming off the Super Bowl loss um, where they literally – went through the season like mowed down everybody and then lost he hasn't really been the same and i think he's kind of coming around and and i'll tell you what cam newton is a great guy to to follow on instagram if you ever have a chance it seems like he's almost like his future is going to be modeling because of all the (laughs) stuff that he actually models he has no football stuff on there at all it's all it's all modeling and outfits and this and that and you know how he is in the the press conferences and stuff oh yeah but it's actually kind of a cool thing to watch because you can tell he's like showing the other side of who he is you know so i really like them but looking at new orleans the season that they had last year they have weapons they have running backs they have a a decent defense honestly a team that can easily win uh, 11 12 games um it's going to be interesting in the beginning because I'm, i'm looking at like atlanta for example i was looking at the beginning of their schedule and they open up against the Eagles, the, the Panthers, the Saints, the Bengals, the Steelers, and then Tampa Bay. So it, those teams can all beat Atlanta. Yeah. You know, so when you're looking at starting the season off, you know, that, that has a big bearing on like how these, you know, when you go 0-3 or 1-3 and to start off the season, sometimes it's hard to get back on track. So that's kind of why I see New Orleans kind of just jumping in the front. You know, they, they have a fair, favorable schedule to start, which is always Tampa nice. And Cleveland start. Say it again. Tampa and Cleveland to start. I mean, if if you look at their schedule, I mean they they 
New Orleans opens up at Tampa Bay. They play Cleveland, Atlanta, the Giants, and Washington, then have a bye week. And then they come back against the Ravens. I mean, if that's not a favorable schedule to somebody, I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah I think so. So that's my that's my champion for the uh, for the South is New Orleans. Okay, all right. I um, I've got Tampa Bay um, in, in finishing fourth. Uh, I've got the uh, the Tabbies in Carolina um, in third, and I actually have New Orleans um, second. Yes. And uh, Atlanta first. I somehow think uh, the Falcons are going to figure out a way how to win that division. Okay. All right. I mean, it's a, they better figure out how to score. There's no reason why they can't. I can I can tell you that, but <laughs> we'll see. All right, Jorge, the West. The West. How far have they dropped to the backpack? The Seattle Seahawks. And I had to even cross this off because on my notes it said Thomas is AWOL. Well, he came back to camp today, the cornerbacks of, or safety, so he is back in. How happy he is, it doesn't matter. But I'll, I'll throw out some names. Graham, Richardson, Bennett, Sherman, Chancellor, and Averill, all gone. Yeah. And nobody to replace them of any significance. Last place for Seattle. Okay. Your Arizona Cardinals, uh, uh, I think they made a great pickup with uh, this guy from UCLA. I can't remember his name. Uh, 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 Rosen, oh, that's his name. Where is he from again? Uh, Ro- uh, uh, what? what? Um, uh. and there's a lot of starters uh, moving on, uh, but they do have a new, I guess his Wilkes. I've never even heard of this coach before, but they were the oldest team in the league last year. Now they're one of the youngest, and uh, they'll just improve as, as the season goes on. The over and under on Bradford getting injured would be interesting, Jeffrey, if you could find that out for me at the nearest casino. Oh, one and a half. That should be under three, but uh, I have them third. Frisco uh, thought about putting them number one, but then they lost McKinnon. I know he's not a uh, the he's the running back slash uh, wide receiver, but he's out. Uh, I, that really hurts Garoppolo, I think, and. Uh, they may also figure out this guy a little bit, although he's going to be a great quarterback. So I'm just going to put them second. And then, because Billy asked me to, I'm going to take the, uh, <laughs> the Los Angeles Rams uh, uh, to, to try to do everything. They've, they've actually, I mean, they were great last year. Were they 11-5 and five last year or something like that? And they picked and up And vastly Cooks. improved. They, they picked up Cooks, they picked up Sue, and they picked up Peters. Uh, Cooks a wide receiver, Sue a defensive lineman, and a... The defensive back, uh, Peters, and I think uh, go Rams. And once they move back to St. Louis, they'll be ready to go. And a very happy defensive lineman uh, who uh, no longer that specter of the contract almost the entire year they were talking about it last year. Yeah, and he still guy. played fantastic. So. Yes. All and right. He has the big monster next to him. Yeah. All right, Jeffrey. The West. Um, I'm going to take Seattle uh, to finish fourth in – I think it's going to be a really rough year for um, Russell Westbrook. I mean, I'm sorry, Russell Wilson, just because his offensive line is kind of deteriorated. Mm-hmm. And actually, they have a couple of running backs that I really like. I mean, Rashad Penny out of out of uh, San Diego San State, Diego I State. really yeah. like this guy. I just kind of feel like it's going to be a very difficult task to be able to run behind that You've offensive line. You've been a line. Penny fan for years. I have. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah I mean – he obviously, um, you know, started behind Pump or was behind Pump Free, yeah. And then he got his he got his chance to shine last year. Did excellent. He was drafted in the first round. I've always liked this guy. Just watching him play, I knew this guy was going to be playing on Sundays. I think it's going to be a difficult task to to play there. Although I do honestly think that Arizona is going to compete for that final spot. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think that Arizona is has really done a whole lot. I mean, they got David Johnson coming back, which is going to help a lot. That is a lot. I do. And on your fantasy team. And, and on my fantasy team, which is, I'll, <laughs> I'll shout this a little shout to my fantasy team. I was on a uh, auction draft yesterday on, on, um, auto. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately I paid $69 for, for <laughs> David Johnson, which I never would have done. And your budget was out of 200. I paid. Okay. Folks yeah. do the math. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have a whole lot to do, but I, I still think I finished pretty solid. We'll see how it goes during the year. Um, Arizona's defense is actually not too bad, and I think they'll be able to compete in the division because of that, but not with the Rams. You know, just I'm talking right. about when I say compete in the division, I mean the other three teams. San Francisco, 
I mean, obviously losing a running back a week before the season start, never really helpful. You know, I know that they've been shopping around. They'll probably pick up somebody. Um, Garoppolo, I'm looking forward to him playing. I mean, I don't know if we can look back into last year and say this is going to continue. You know, I mean, this guy is going to run into stuff. I'm sure the coaches are watching film on him. They're going to figure out where to, what his weaknesses are, and that's going to make it a little bit more challenging. Sometimes when you're playing a team that you know is out of it, you're not really concentrating no. on, on beating that team. No. The beginning of this season, I think that that's going to change a little bit. So I see any of these, but the, those three teams being, you know, jockeying for second. Well, to they're fourth certainly place. tangibles. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. But the Rams, I mean, if you think about all the weapons that they have, offensively, in Georgia, I want you to hear this clearly: the best running back, the best running back in the NFL, <laughs> which I said, but and he was offensive uh. player of the year last year. But you know, watching this kid run, he, he's finally got a good year. Uh, a line behind him. You have uh, Dominican Sue that's kind of stepped in. Donald finally signed his contract. Yeah. Defensive line. I mean, can you even shake a stick at this team? I mean, yeah. they obviously are strong, you know, in all aspects. Um, arguably probably one of the best defenses in, in uh, football right now. The Rams are instant contender with what they have. I'm not going to say they're my Super Bowl, but I actually said that I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rams go to the Super Bowl. All right. I'll take Clemson's defensive line over the Rams right now. Yeah, just remember, Clemson has oh, maybe two guys that right. might play in the NFL. Okay. Right? I say Clemson has maybe two guys that will start in the NFL. Let me rephrase that. Okay. All right. All right, uh, guys, I've got, uh, I've got Arizona finishing fourth. Okay. Uh, again, really young team, but, you know, this is a team that – it's going to definitely contend maybe a couple of years from now. Yep. As long as they don't get trigger happy and start just bringing in some, oh, you know, guys that are kind of long in the tooth but have a name. Larry uh, Fitzgerald. Yeah, no, yeah, no, not like that. <laughs> I, just, I, I love Larry, by the way, man. This I guy is too. so classy. Yeah, he is an absolute stud on the field, but he is a real stud off the field. Absolutely. Yeah. So great guy. My uh, third place team is Seattle. I think that they will figure out a way. First of all, Seattle was is and always will be a very tough place to play yeah. uh, and uh, you've got usually the the crowd and then plus it's uh, you know more times than not it's going to be damp it's going to be you know chilly and it's also going to be wet they seem to thrive in it um i think that but it's still not enough for them to to get any higher than third place and i've got uh, the 49ers in third uh, you know much improved team but i i just think they're going to be a third and i just think the rams uh, are going to win it yeah, uh, but this is a um, San Francisco. You got second, Billy. I'm sorry, second. I've got San Francisco second and L.A. first. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're not. You you were just chomping at the bit to make that correction. No, I yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking I'm looking at <laughs> Seattle's schedule right now. They open up against the Broncos at the Broncos, which is a which is a winnable game. The Broncos, we're not really sure how they're going to win that game. But then they go at the Bears. Then they play Ross. Dallas. Then Ross. at the Cardinals, and then the Rams. And then at Oakland, those are their first six games. So, unfortunately, four of the first six games on the road, which which is a hard, tough uh, spot to the season. And then you go into your bye week. And then, you know, coming back at Detroit, which, you know, is definitely a loss. So, <laughs> okay. just kidding, man. Just throwing it out there, George. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, you guys want to just keep right on going? Yeah, let's just run through, man. This is perfect. 928. You're doing good, Billy. All right. We run a tight ship around here. Okay, the <laughs> AFC. Jorge, which conference would you uh, – which division would you like to start with? We know we're going with the, uh, the, uh, uh, the East. Okay. I preface all this, if you haven't figured it out, you uh, both of you geniuses, that the AFC is uh, the lesser conference than the NFC this year. NFC is loaded. Out of my top ten, I got eight in the NFC. Uh, I preface that only because the next three teams are the three worst teams in the for me. Indianapolis was close, but I have the Buffalo Bills with their stud quarterback, uh, what's his name, Peterman, uh, uh, being uh, beating out the the uh, the other stud, Josh Allen, and. I don't think Buffalo has a prayer on earth. Uh, they got their quarterbacks are questionable. Their offensive line, and three of five of them are gone. Their wide receivers suck. Uh, if, if it wasn't for their defense, they'd probably get blown out in every game. So I think Buffalo is number 32 in the whole uh, thing. That means last there. Miami, I give them credit. They got Tannehill back, but they lost uh, Landry and uh, – and, uh, 
they got a pretty good offense, uh, but uh, the linebacking crew with a, uh, was it Alonzo and uh, McMillan from Ohio State who didn't play, and he looks lost this uh, this uh, sp- uh, this uh, preseason. I don't think they'll get up farther than third place. Uh, Jets, I think, uh, I hate to put them 30th because I think they, they did well getting Darnold and made a few other moves that have been very solid. But they're, it, it's all ifs, and it's if he does this, if he does that, if this one <laughs> does that. So I'm going to put him at 30th, with, well, second in that division. Then guess who's first? Although I think they're about to take a downspin. I got uh, the Patriots. They've lost a lot, uh, but... They still have that mystique, and until they get knocked off the pedestal, uh, you got to uh, you got to go. So I got to take uh, New England at at first, but uh, I really think they're near the end of that that little peak. But in the AFC this year, they still have the big uh, the big guns. Okay, well I'm going to take um, Miami to be the fourth place team in that division. Um, Although, I mean, Tannehill coming back is good. They they have a, a nice uh, young r- running back. I think it's they, there's just a lot missing. You know, they lost Dominican Sue. They lost a, a, a linebacker. Yeah. They lost Landry. I mean, even with Tannehill coming back, I don't see them being a team that can compete in this division. Maybe compete in some games. But, I mean, it's – Like the two they play against Buffalo? Well <laughs> – Fortunately for them, they play Buffalo and they play the Jets, which they can beat both of those teams, so you just really never know um, what you're going to see then. I mean, they their first um, – first of all, their their bye week isn't until week 11. And when you're when you're going into a, a season and you know that you got to play 10 weeks before you get a week off, that's already like a negative in your mind. <laughs> I mean, think about this. You're going to have to play two and a half months before you get a, night, a day off. But they open up against uh, Tennessee – the Jets, the Raiders, Patriots, Bengals, uh, Bears, Lions. That that's a tough. That is. Tough. That's a tough take, you know, to to, to uh, start out. Um, Buffalo, I have in third place. I don't think there's really much about them. As a matter of fact, I thought I saw a stat the other day that said that they cut both the punters that they had in their preseason roster. And then it said the comment underneath that was, "You don't need a punt with with Peterson as a quarterback because he's going to throw some picks." You know, so, you know, when I saw that, I was like, wow, that's probably pretty fitting. But, you know, oh. come come to show you that there there is some room for pro kick in the NFL, obviously, if these guys can't find a punter. Yeah, they, they'll you be can't busy. find one of 32 people, you know, but they're, they're obviously yeah. going to sign somebody. But to see, you know, the fact that you brought two guys in at, on your preseason roster and you cut them both is, is – should they be a, a guy that I'm not – Overdoing to Jeffrey, but I, I did the things on paper the other day for the for the cuts. But they picked up a guy that was cut by the Patriots. Oh, okay. Uh, I couldn't even say some French name. I can't even say his name. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, I, I said the same thing. There's got to be something else coming. Oh, of course. But it didn't. So then I have second place in the division. I have the Jets, and and I when I say second place, I'm talking about seven and nine like eight and eight. Um, I'll tell you this, that the, the Lions will not cover in week one. Um, they're a six and a half point favor. And as much as I would love to see the Lions go up there and win by 30 at home, it's probably not going to happen. The, the Jets will probably come close and, and, you know, probably come down to the last possession to win the game. And the Lions will squeak out like a three point victory or something. For all your teaser fans, and I know it's not you, George, but all, for all the teaser fans, <laughs> go ahead and take, you're safe taking the Jets on the teaser. That's going to be easy. And then, obviously, Patriots. And, you know, they're talking about um, just possibly being Brady's last year. We all know what happens in the last year of these of these players. Um, uh, John to. Elway, Peyton Manning, you know, do I need to go on? Ray Lewis. If this is indeed Brady's last year, you might as well just go and hand him the trophy right now and just let him ride off into the sunset. They should win at least 12 to 13 games easily. The one thing about Belichick is you don't even need to know who these guys are. He puts these guys into the offense. For some reason, they become good. Yep. And a shout-out to um, I, one player that got cut by the Patriots this year was uh, Brandon Flowers. And I've been watching this guy's career since he was in college. I've always liked him. He immediately gets picked up by the Lions, which I liked, yeah. because the Lions did need some, you know, some linebacker help. 
Patricia knows the guy because he coached him Obviously, the last few years. Yeah. So it was good to see Flowers go to the to the Lions. I'm glad to see that. That's a good pick. I see the I see the Patriots winning this division without too much trouble, almost just like every other year. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and by the way, this has been a, a pretty steady trend if you look back over the past seven or eight years. That uh, when they play Buffalo, the game normally goes over. So just kind of check this in your box when you see that game happen. Just look at the over. <laughs> okay. Um, real quick, I've got uh, Buffalo, uh, you know, in the cellar of that division. Uh, then the Dolphins, uh, and then the Jets, and uh, then the uh, the Patriots. And I think that uh, the Patriots are going to win this, uh, you know, division with uh, you know a few weeks to spare. Um, and uh, but as far as uh, anointing uh, Brady and the Patriots Super Bowl champions, no, <laughs> uh, not going to do it. It's, I'm, I'm not going to do it. May have to congratulate him at the end of the year, but I'm not going to do it now. All right, uh, Jorge, your next division, sir. The division of the uh, of the Central. Okay. Black Known Ray. as the North. Or what? The North. I don't know what the hell it is. It's what the Browns thing is. In. Oh, kid, okay. <laughs> what, what is it in? Uh, it's the called, North. It's called the AFC North. Whatever. Okay. All right. Yep. You're done embarrassing me or what? <laughs> okay. Cincinnati is fourth. Uh, um, Lewis is on the bigger hot seat than uh, the previous mentioned Tampa coach. They've really improved their offensive line with uh, Glenn and Fisher. Uh, uh, pardon me, Glenn and Price from Ohio State if he's healthy. But I just don't think that uh, Cincinnati has anything uh, uh, comparable to the third team in the league, which I have the Browns at. By the way, the de- defensive line of uh, Cincinnati, one of the elite around, and if they if the back seven can uh, just be okay, their defense may push them past Cleveland. But I do have Cleveland a third. Even though I don't think they're the most improved team in football, they're second to Houston, uh, only because Houston with their injuries. But Cleveland, I don't think, has done anything wrong. This, this uh, I've been watching it obviously closely, and they have uh, – they pulled some rabbits out, and I hope they were. Uh, Why Jackson is sitting there, def- uh, not even telling people who his left tackle is right now. It's absolutely stupid. They, uh, just uh, stop playing games. These guys are adults, and just tell tell the people who, who they're going to have. Other than that, um, I expect Garrett and, and uh, the boys to have a uh, uh, some uh, excellent sacks and a lot of a lot of good things. And this is not insider trading. I'm telling you this for a fact. So, uh, I think the Browns are going to finish third. Nothing stands out with Baltimore at number two, and yet I just uh, I just think that they're going to uh, be number two in a possible white card. And this one could go. They could go from number nine all the way down to twenty something. Uh, Flacco is in his best shape of his career, according to a lot of people just because I think Jackson got drafted and he finally got his ass in gear to worry about. Exactly. Jackson's definitely not not, not ready for uh, for big-time action now, so I think Baltimore. And there's no weaknesses on their defense when Smith comes back from the suspension, so I got Baltimore at number two. And the lovely the lovely Steelers, they're finally showing some some uh, some kinks in there. With, uh, what Bell is doing, I don't know if you guys uh, uh, read it today or anything, but the offensive lineman came out for the uh, the uh, the Steelers and because he didn't report again today and told him he's a piece of shit, and uh, that's not going to be an interesting uh, uh, locker room when he comes in. Yeah. But fourteen point <laughs> five million into your hands is a little bit better, and they brought out the salary. The two offensive linemen, Villanova and uh, Villanueva and uh, Foster, I think his name was. Yeah. And so there is some de- dissension there. But the biggest stat I have is when Shazir, Shazir, Shazir went, went down for Pittsburgh last year, their points per game went up 11 points, and Joe Bostic is not Ryan Shazir. That's uh, right. I, it's not uh, uh, that. So I think their defense, they're very, very vulnerable in this in this, uh, uh, in this, de- in this uh, division. So I'm giving them a tentative first, but uh, there's somebody could be knocking them off for this division. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to go with uh, my fourth place team. I'm going to go with Cincinnati, even though there's a couple of young players that I'm on this team that I really think are going to have breakout years. Um, the first player I believe is uh, Mixon. 
uh, the running back. I think that um, he had, a, you know, like uh, average or maybe a below average year last year. I, you know, he played only half the season. I think he only played seven games. But I think that with the rest of the running backs that they have, they it kind of seems like they're kind of paving the way to kind of work somebody else into that into that spot. So I do mm-hmm. think that Mixon's a guy to look out for. Um, John Ross, the the rookie out of Washington, um, fastest guy in at the uh, combine. This guy blazes past people. There was a couple of um, preseason games where they actually showed some stats of this guy catching the ball, and he just makes plays. He's the kind of guy, guy if you give him the ball in open field, he's going to be tough to bring down. I, I'm really looking forward to see John Ross play. I, I think that with A.J. Green on the field, he's – he probably is going to be like a two, three receiver, <clears throat> but he'll, he'll definitely have to draw coverage. Cause you don't, you don't want this guy to get the ball, especially in single coverage. Cause it's going to be over. So I think that that might help uh, Cincy, but I, I still don't think they're going to be that great of a team. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, six, six to seven win, maybe five to seven win team. Right. Um, in third place, I actually have Baltimore. I think that they have a lot of talent. They have a, they have good run, young running back. They have uh, Flacco that, you know, I agree with George that he's in his – probably in his best um, condition. And you know what? He should be because he's one of the top play, paid quarterbacks. So you should be in the best condition. Yeah. So the fact that, you know, they, they have a good defense, good, the defense is going to keep them in a lot of games. Um, the top of this division is going to be tough to contend. I'm going to take Cleveland as my second-place team. Ooh. And I want to really put them in first place because of the amount of talent that they have on both sides of the ball. You know, they, they've been bringing in these picks. They've been bringing in these first-round draft picks and actually have more actually coming next year. Um, I'm, I, I was looking at a site today where it said the projected wins is four. I would bet this whoever put that stat on there, like whatever he had to, to, for a four-game wins. I think Vegas has them as a six uh, win. Five and a half. Five and a half, yeah, five yeah. and a half, six. Um, I think that that's probably more um, where they should be. But again, a bunch of a, a bunch of great young talent on this team. Yeah. With 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 Landry, um, the guy can make plays anywhere. I like Baker Mayfield. I can, I don't care what anybody says. I I told you this in Oklahoma. I did tell you that he was going to win the Heisman like early in the year. Yep. And he did. And I did to say he was going to go with the Giants, which he should have, <laughs> because the Giants really could have used this guy in the future. But I just like the fact that he's going to get in there and he's going to stick his nose in it and he's going to make plays. That's exactly what Cleveland needs. Now, talk about a hot seat. You know, your co- your coach has won one game in the past two years. That's a, that's a hot seat. That's if there a is hot one. seat. Um, then going to, to, to Pittsburgh. And you know what? I liked Pittsburgh a lot more maybe two, three weeks ago. But watching the kind of deterioration of everything that's going on right now is tough. And when you're talking about – pissing off your 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 players and say it's a guy in your defense that plays secondary that's one thing yeah it's the guy that blocks for you yeah it's the guy that opens the hole yeah it, you know, these are the guys who are sitting around saying you wouldn't be where you're at without us exactly period did say that. yeah and i mean when you piss off a guy like that they call it my my high school coach used to call it a lookout block and that's <laughs> and that's when you just turn around and tell the running back to look out you know because the guy's about to tackle you but, is, that um, the longest, is that the longest yard part two of the, the sequel to the movie? Because I remember that when they wouldn't block for Burke Reynolds, they kicked the shit out of him. Uh, you know, honestly, I was a young guy at that time, and, and my coach probably saw the movie. I don't even know if I saw it. So <laughs> I do remember the longest yard, the, the first yeah. one. It was a great movie. They just let the guys in to kill them. Matador yeah. defense. Or yeah, Matador. I should say Matador offense. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, okay. Well, listen, guys, uh, I've got uh, Cincinnati in the, in the cellar, and – I mean, how long have people been talking about Marvin Lewis on the hot seat? Ten years now? Yeah. Okay. He's not going anywhere. All right. Charles Barkley, monkey theory. <laughs> All right. Um, I have Baltimore um, in third place. Okay. Uh, and, again, I, I think that people keep talking about Flacco, and I keep saying to myself, this guy was paid huge money after winning a Super Bowl and hasn't really done jack since yeah. then. Now he decides to get in shape. And, yeah, that draft pick uh, certainly picked up the – you know, his, the, I guess the, you know, his trainer called him up and said, hey, look, you better get on the good foot. 
I hope they don't rush Jackson in. I really do. I love Jackson. You know, I can't wait for him to Just, play. you know, allow him that opportunity to play behind Flacco, learn the playbook, learn the offense. That's the way to do it. Um, I've got Cleveland in second place. I'm not trying to jinx them, Georgie. Honest, I've got it. I think that they're going to be a, a much improved team. I think Mayfield's going to, you know, be a, a really good quarterback. But I think he's in the right place right now. And I think with all the add-ons, Landry, um, I, I just see this team being much improved and not maligned, you know, anymore. And don't 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 forget the the sleeper they got the the tight end from Miami. Yoku, yeah. yeah. This yeah, this yeah, kid's yeah. good, man. I'm telling you right now, he's gonna make plays. And Pittsburgh, um, I I think that they're gonna win that division. Um, they always seem to do it, but I think that Bell has completely miscalculated <clears throat> his move here. And I think the last thing that Bell wants to see is Pittsburgh succeed without him. Uh, because then that clock ticks and then that money just starts getting lower, 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 and lower. And I think, you know, and honestly, I applaud the offensive linemen for coming out and saying the things that they did. Uh, all right, Georgie is. Uh, all right, let's go over to, we're running against the clock here, so let me go to the, uh, what they call the South, and I'm going with Indianapolis as fourth. Oliver Luck, uh, the best thing they did for him. Uh, is to bring in Nelson. Other than that, uh, I just think Indianapolis defense stinks. Uh, the rest of the team is not impressive, so I got him at fourth. Team that probably is higher in both of your lists, but I have one problem, Blake Bortles. So their defense is probably one of the best, if not the best defense in the NFL. Fortnet is okay, although he still only averaged 3.8 or 9 per carry. But with, as long as Bortles is as quarterback of that team, they'll never get. I mean, they'll make the playoffs. They could, but I don't think they're going any farther. He likes his play time better than the work time. And Tennessee, uh, number two. Um, what did I have? Oh, their culture change. They brought in a couple Patriots to add to the a very nice team. They brought in Butler and then Deion Lewis. So I think they uh, they may. Uh, uh, do that uh, pretty good, a run-oriented team that will uh, make Marietta much better. And then I got the team, number one is, is uh, Houston. All they have to do is stay healthy. Uh, they went from one of the best last year down to number down to one of the worst because everybody got hurt. I think Watson's the real deal, but uh, coming back from injury, you got to watch yourself. Uh, uh, whether they are pulling up short or something, I don't know what's going to But Rock and Marcellius and all those guys are back. I got them number one. All right. Jeffrey. I'm going to go number four with uh, the Colts. I don't – I would actually like to put this team higher because I, I think that they have a lot of the weapons that they need. Mm -hmm. Without luck, though, I can't really make that um, – you know, it push them up and all. Um, I do have uh, Jacksonville in third place. Um, I'm not completely sold on Bortles either, but that with, with a couple of the wide receivers making some moves – and, you know, this – an overall, like, mentality of just being on the Jaguars, like, I guess. I mean, I, they overachieved last year. Um, they they had a great opportunity if it wasn't for, you know, the play calling at the end of that game against Patriots. They probably could have won the game, but they kind of, well, let's just run the ball and just see if Try Brady can do lose, it. Try yeah. not to lose as opposed to And Brady showed you, I can yeah. still do this and, and win. So that mentality doesn't go away, unfortunately, when it comes to coaching. Um, in third place, I have the Houston Texans, and I definitely agree that Watson is the real deal. I'm hoping that the guy plays and, and stays healthy. Um, the question mark for me with Houston is probably the running game. I'm not completely sold on Lamar Miller. Um, you know, obviously they have they have uh, wide receivers or Beasley. They have they have great um, defensive line, secondary questionable in in, in some instances. I'm going to take Tennessee to win that division. And mainly because I'm waiting for Mariota just to, to break out and, and get to the next level. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it kind of seems like he's been a, a you know a 500 quarterback. I'm kind of waiting for that one year that he actually comes out. They they have a lot of good components in Tennessee. And when I say that this, in my opinion anyways, this division is going to be very competitive. I'm talking about the guy, the team that wins this division maybe wins nine games, and you and you might have three teams that are between seven and nine wins. Okay. I'm going to take uh, Indianapolis uh, fourth, and I've actually it was a tough one, but I've got Tennessee at third, Jacksonville uh, because of that defense. Uh, I think they're just going to allow Bortles to just kind of manage the game at uh, 
um, second, and I've got Houston winning the uh, winning the division. Okay. All right. And you, you know what? As much junk as Jalen Ramsey's been talking, I kind of want to see this dude get torched a little bit. But he, he will. You know, because we we've had other guys <laughs> that have kind of spoke out like that, and we saw what happened with them. So. All right, Georgie, the West. The last. We save the best for last. The future Raiders. A great article. I'm not going to have read it to you because we don't have time. SB Nation has it, and the the title of it. What the f is this Raiders team doing? That's all I have to say. They've got rid of so many players. Uh, uh, they really haven't brought. Well, they brought Jordy Nelson back at 39, and AJ McCarron, not 39, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, I don't know what they're doing, except I really believe maybe that uh, uh, in the long run, uh, Gruden is doing something nice for you guys. And when you get when you get they get to Vegas, they'll have the draft picks. Uh, and uh, maybe it may have turned out right. Who knows? But I don't understand what he's doing right now. I understand he was his back was to the wall with Mac, but uh, he wouldn't give in at all. Uh, Kansas City, uh, only question in, in my mind, number three is uh, quarterback Mahomes. Uh, um, he's been very erratic in the preseason, and uh, I guess they have a pretty complicated offense uh, maybe next year, but I got Kansas City at third. I'm putting Denver up there only because of uh, well, their defense is not as great as it used to be, but Chubb will, I believe, really help, and Shane Ray should mature into a pretty good linebacker. Uh, Case Keenum, no matter who is there, is better than what it was, and they finally get rid of Lynch, which is uh, one of the greatest things, and he'll find another team if he hasn't yet. And then you're over to the Chargers. Uh, there's the losing Hurst, the tight end, uh, who may be back by the end of the year, I think uh, they're solid both sides of the ball. And I just want to see Rivers have one year that they, he, he gets uh, some some uh, kudos for what he's done. Here, uh, here. A few more inter- interceptions. But he's been a class guy and been out there every year. And uh, I'm putting them number one in the West. Here, here. Jeffrey. Finally, my last thing I'll say, I, I, by default, i got to take New England against uh, New Orleans in the Super Bowl. All okay. right. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to go with Denver, um, bring up that division. Um, I do think that uh, Denver's defense is is much improved, but I don't think that they're going to have the offensive weapons. The question mark at quarterback is obviously huge. Um, the next two teams I think are going to compete for that for the second place and pop, possibly a wild card, and that's Oakland I'm going to take in third place. Um, obviously, a lot, with a lot of the things that happen, I think – Gruden is kind of like, hey, let's just compete this year. We got two first-round picks, six total picks for for Cleo Mack. You can tell, you can say whatever you want. Six players for one player is a good deal any day. I don't care. I, I don't care. Down the road, down the road is going to benefit you guys. Yes, absolutely. There's yeah the in, in L A. The, I'm sorry, the Las Vegas Raiders will well, the, benefit. The first comment that I made and when I saw the trade was, man, he's paving the way to win that Super Bowl the first year, and which I appreciate. Um, in second place, I have Kansas City. Um, I do think that they're maybe a, a, a 9-10 win team. It should be interesting to see. Um, I like Mahomes. The dude has got an absolute cannon through the ball, 65, 70 yards, perfect strike in the air. He's got a great arm. The winner of that division I have, Phillip Rivers. I've always liked the guy. Any guy that, like, when they leave, puts on the cowboy boots and a cowboy hat and walks out in his Wranglers, I like that type of dude. All you know right. he's going to give you all all out. Him and Brett Favre, you know. they And your Super Bowl. Guys. Um, I'm going to go, well, I don't know, because I, I kind of want to see the Patriots do it. I think earlier on I picked the, the Rams and the, and the Patriots and the Rams to win it all. But we all know that it's the year of the Lions, and the Lions are definitely going to win. Way to go, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know that if you watch the show, that I was, actually that's a joke. Okay. I've got, um, I've got it really uh, very close, but uh, I'm going to pick Oakland and bring up the rear fourth. Denver, again, it's interchangeable between third and fourth between them. I've got Denver third. I've got KC second and the Chargers. Wow, uh, cross the board Chargers. Running. And my Super Bowl, I have um, – I'm going to actually go with um, a repeat of the NFC. Somehow Philadelphia, Wentz is going to come back, uh, and it is probably going to be against uh, New England. Wow. Yeah, a repeat of the Super Bowl. And then they can do it three more times and be like the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, guys, um, we got it in, and uh, with minutes to spare, with a, a couple of minutes, about a minute to spare here, John. Yeah, we got about a minute to spare. George, as always, man, um, thank you again for you know taking time to, to, to come on to the show. Uh, 
and uh, provide us with your picks. So we really appreciate it as always. I appreciate you allowing me to do that. And now we're down to almost uh, what six weeks before I uh, make my re-entry into the Vegas world for two weeks of debauchery. Total havoc. That's. <laughs> What George, you say? George said, hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> well, wife. well, George, this, first of all, we're certainly looking forward to finally having you actually on the show, man. And uh, I'm oh, certainly looking great. forward to you to get into town so yeah, we can I'm get out there. Uh, I'm getting a face transplant at uh, the clinic. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Do it after. If there's still a few stitches in there, just pre- we'll pretend we're on some horror show. It'll be all right. That's right. All right. So anyway. Yeah. Jeffrey, as always, man, thank you. Appreciate so. it, brother. Absolutely. All right. Folks, join us next Wednesday. You know, it'll be the 12th of September, 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, for another installment of Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. Have a great week. God bless.